me next time. Not only Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, Larry Ellison is America's third richest man. He is powerful and controversial, but often very private. This week, though, the founder of Oracle opened up to Charlie Rose in a wide-ranging and fascinating interview covering everything from Google to Apple to NSA surveillance. The only problem guys I have tr trouble with are the Google guys. Uh, really? The, the, uh, so yeah. Larry and Sergey you have trouble with? Uh, I, Larry specifically. Uh, Larry's, uh, I think... Uh, I Larry th per se? Yeah, Larry per se. Why? Because uh, he makes the decisions over there. He, run he runs that company. No one else runs that company. Uh, and they decided, let me be very clear. They t when you program, when you write a program for the Android phone, you write it, you, you use the Oracle tool, or Oracle Java tools for everything. And at the very end, you press a button and said, convert this to Android format. We don't compete with Google. We don't do anything Google does. No. We, do, we just think they took our stuff and, and, yeah, that, okay. and that was wrong. That's a completely separate issue. But, but I mean, you, you think they're evil? Uh, I think what they did was, was uh, absolutely evil. And you blame Larry Page? 100% Larry Page. So if what they did is evil, that makes Larry Page evil? No, it makes what he did evil, which is quite different. And I know his slogan is, don't be evil. Exactly, that's what I'm talking about. And, and, uh, and I think he slipped up this one time. But uh, the... Um, so he's a good guy, except this one time when he... I, this really bothers me. I don't, I don't see how he thinks you can just copy someone else's stuff. It really, it really mm -hmm. bothers me. Let's talk about Steve Jobs. Yeah, my best friend for 25 years. What is it about him? You, you, we recognize the fact that he loved Apple, he wanted to make Apple great, and he did. But what was it about him that enabled him to do it other than he worked hard? He was brilliant. I mean, he was our Edison. He was our Picasso. He was an incredible inventor. So what happens to Apple without Steve? Well, we already know. What? We saw, we conducted the experiment. I mean, it's been done. We saw Apple with Steve Jobs. We saw Apple without Steve Jobs. We saw Apple with Steve Jobs. Now, we're going to see Apple without Steve Jobs. So you're shorting Apple? I'm not shorting Apple. I, I, I think I like Tim Cook. I mean, I, I, I think there are a lot of talented people over there. You just but Steve said is irreplaceable. Apple is going down without Steve Jobs. That's, uh, a, that's exactly what you said. Yeah, they Apple are. is going down okay. without Steve Jobs. Okay, I'll say it publicly. He's irreplaceable. Yeah, they, I don't see how, how they can, how they can, they, they will not be nearly so successful because he's gone. Where do you come down on what NSA is doing? Well, the great thing is we live in a democracy. If we don't like what NSA is doing, we, always, we can just get rid of the government and put in a different government. I think, uh, actually, we've been collecting this information for so long, and long before NSA was collecting it. Let me tell you, tell you who was collecting it. American Express, uh, Bank of America, Visa, all of your all of your credit card data, we have and all of your all of your financial records. This whole issue of privacy is utterly fascinating to me. Who's ever heard of this information being misused by the government? In what way? Well, Modern I just America. hear you clearly. You're saying whatever the NSA is doing is okay with me. It's great. I wish. Yeah, it's great. It's essential. By the way, President Obama thinks it's essential. It's essential if we want, uh, if we want to minimize so, the kind of strikes that we just had in Boston. Uh, it's absolutely essential. So I, I, what people... point would it be alarming for you in terms of government surveillance? At what point would your red line be crossed? Um, if the government used it to do political targeting, if the Democrats used it to go after Republicans, uh, if the Republicans used it to go after Democrats. In other words, if it became a, uh, we stopped looking for terrorists and we started looking for people with, um, for, on the other side of the aisle. Charlie Rose is with us now. Good to see <laughs> How you, How unusual sir. is this? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Get out of my chair. Um, this is, um, this was fascinating. Yeah. Larry Ellison doesn't talk much. You've talked to all these guys. You've talked to Larry. You've talked to Larry Page. Right. You've talked to Steve Jobs. Bill Gates. Uh, and Bill Gates. What surprised you the most? That he did the interview first. Uh, and secondly, the wide range. We went to talk about the America's Cup. But his opinions about Google, his opinions about the future of Apple, his opinions uh, about everything. He is a man who's outspoken, he's candid, uh, always controversial.
And what he said about Google, I thought, was surprising. He's engaged in a lawsuit with them about Java, which is a very interesting controversy about something that was designed and developed at Sun Microsystems, which Oracle now owns. Larry is not over this. No, no, he's not over it. And, and I think he's still engaged in this very, very difficult legislation. But he also is a guy who, uh, He's a fighter. He comes out fighting on, on it with everybody. He's had very controversial relationships with Bill Gates, for example. Yep. That's kind of mellowed, and others. People uh, may not realize how close he was with Steve Jobs. The closest. The interesting thing is it's, he offered to buy Apple uh, before Steve rejoined the firm. Uh, Steve said no, and he enabled somebody else helped him to do that. They were so close, they'd take long walks. They were really knew each other and, and liked each other a lot. So much so that when Steve died, one of the people that he wanted to say something at his service was Larry. Are you surprised he spoke so candidly about Apple's future I and was. how dire that yeah. future and might I, be? I, I, and I disagree with him too. I mean, that came out of love and respect for Steve. He said basically that Apple would never be as good as it was under Steve Jobs and it would decline. There are a lot of very good people at Apple. They were trained in many cases by Steve Jobs. They were part of a team. Steve got the best out of them, but they're there. I mean, I think people like uh, Tim Cook and, and, and especially Johnny Ive and Eddie Q and lots of other very good people. Thanks for letting me sit here. Well, oh, my pleasure. You look good at that chair. <laughs> Revealing interview. Uh, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much.